Today, I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Thank you, Josiah. Well, it's great to see everybody this week. Glad we're able to worship God together and just being able to give him praise. By the way, the Bible Bowl is coming up in one week and seven days, just so that you know. Uh, Brad is going to need some help with that, and so he's... uh, making lots of plans, and so if you can relieve his anxiety, I'm sure he would appreciate it. Uh, As you know, we have done a survey, and uh, I wanted to give you some results of what our survey is all about. Uh, Just trying to give you a little bit about what we did is, wait, let me back up. So we've been trying to do some planning with the elders trying to figure out what it is that we need to do for our next step and the way in which we need to do it. And the elders decided we need to focus on two things, especially this year. One is evangel, one is worship, and the other one is education. And so of those two things, in order to have a goal, you have to have it measurable and you have to have it specific. And so we decided, well... What you need to do then is take a survey at the beginning and see what your rating is, so you got a baseline, and then take a survey at the end and see how far down it went. No, I mean, see how far up it went. Uh, See what improvements were made. And so in the meantime, try some things in between. So the first survey that we gave to you a couple of weeks ago was in, and, and I have some results for you to be able to share with that. Um, Before I do that, I'm glad that you gave us your opinion. Thank you for giving us your opinion. Uh, We are going to be working on some things. That means that you're going to have to be willing to experiment. So hopefully you're okay with that just by putting some things in that you did. Uh, Having said that, the main thing I want you to realize is we are not going to do this to please you. So I know you may think that's counterproductive to the survey, but the last thing we want to to do is be a consumer-driven church so that we give you a survey and then you tell us what we want and then, okay, we'll do what you want. No. We want to do what God wants, and that's the main thing, and we're trying to be pleasing to him. And our first assumption is, If we are able to reach people for God, and if we are able to please God, then you're going to be happy with that. That's the first assumption on the whole thing. So, we're not trying to give up scripture, we're not trying to give up anything about that. We have an audience of one, you are not it. The audience is God, and all of us are here in order to worship Him, and He is the one that we all are trying to please. Because he listens to our prayers, he listens to our songs, he listens to our message and what's going on. And the notes that you scribble, he can read. Okay, just wanted to give you that one as well. However, and this is a big however, worship must be relevant in our time. Or we have not brought worship and honor and glory to God. If it's not then we are not connecting people with God. And that's the reason for the survey, is to be able to connect people with God. And so that's what we're trying to look at. In case you have questions about why do it this way, we're just trying to figure out some way to do it. So I'm just going to give you a lot of numbers. Here's the the basics of what happened and what it all looks like. We had 161 people who filled out a survey. Some of you did it online, some of you did it on a paper here, 
uh, whichever way all of those got put in, all of those got counted. We you know, have all of those and so we're able to say there was about 161, there was exactly 161 that we got. Uh, we have just over 300 coming on Sunday morning in here. Maybe a few of those are babies, so over half. I think that's good. Anytime you get over half participating. We didn't get 300, but, you know, 161's not too bad. At least you have an idea of what some of you think about all of these things. So one of the first things we asked was, how often do you attend worship and Bible class? There were a number of different responses on these. None of the questions had 161 people, okay? So nobody filled out the entire survey. Um, this was 157, and so you can see there are 17 that go to worship only. The majority go to Bible class and worship, and the majority of those are here over half of the time. So that's really talking about us, the people who are here all the time, the people who are worshiping together all the time, the people who are part of this. Um, you'll notice the less than 50% down here, there was three, okay? And I just want to show you that one because it has kind of a bearing in the next chart that I wanted to show you. Um, so there's three people who are here less than half the time, and the reason that they're here less than half the time is shown up on the rating scale. We ask you from 1 to 10, how do you feel about our worship? How do you rate it? Here's one, two, three, and plus one. So they're here less than half the time. No wonder. I mean, I wouldn't have come to something I didn't really like either. And so that's where they are. And that's what shows up on the survey. Okay? The ones that are over half or that rate us better than that are all the rest of them. There's only four that are under 50%. Uh, there are 114 that are 8, 9, and 10. That seems pretty high to me. I mean, just guessing at this whole thing. That seems like a pretty good response. Obviously, there are some things that need to change, some things that can be better. Uh, and some of you may have taken this differently, just in how you took it. Uh, anything over a five is obviously good, and so you thought, well, nobody's perfect, so I'll put a six. Um, but this is more like the guy who's your waiter in a restaurant, and when he gives you the little card, says, would you rate my service to you today? Please give me a ten. Because if you give him a nine, it means he is a terrible server and you are not satisfied. And that's the way his management will read that. So we're going to read this. This is what we got. Okay? Not good, not bad. It's just the way it is. Um, it looks pretty high to me. I'm glad there are so many people who are excited about our worship, who seem like this is a good thing. Uh, some of you may have said 10, simply, not that there isn't room for improvement, simply because oh, it's, it's good. And I'm just going to take it as good. And all of you know there's room for improvement. So that's just part of it. Um, and we know that there's room for improvement as well. And then the next one is on a scale of 1 to 10. How edified and encouraged are you when you leave the worship? So this is asking about how you feel, not just what did we do, but are you encouraged, are you edified, are you built up by the time that you left? 115 are in the 8, 9, and 10. And so that seems like a pretty good. It's certainly toward the higher end of things. Um, this is not necessarily how worship went because you may have overlooked a whole lot of things. But this is, here's what I got, and here's how I felt leaving. And so a lot of you felt very uplifted in, in that. And so I'm glad that one's that high. It gives us something to work on. And then we asked two questions. One is about areas to grow, and the other one is what's well done. And so areas to grow, uh, we listed each area, singing, message, prayer, communion, technology, 
announcements. And these are the number of people who checked the box and said, I think singing needs to grow. I think message needs to grow. So there was 58 that thought singing needed to be improved. Okay? There are 39 who said message needs to be improved. And this is just, you know, we gave you a place to write comments as to why you thought this. And we have those comments as well, and I appreciate that because that gives us some reason to go by. And then we ask, what do you feel like was done well? And just so you can see the comparison, areas that are done well, singing comes up at 111. <laughs> okay. Well, adding those two numbers together, somebody put, you need to improve it, but I think it's really done well. All right? That's okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, I understand what you're trying to say. Yes, it's good, but you, know, you, you should improve some things. And so that's just part of it. This is all very positive. Um, lots of people are on the upper end of this thing saying, yes, we feel like this has been done well. And we feel good about all of these. Nobody got a 161. Okay? So nobody got 100%. Where every single person said, wow, the message is just so great. I filled in the rest of those for you. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> but you can see where things are and, and how they go. And so numbers are tricky. I know they're tricky. And so I am so trying to be honest with all of this and give you this is a real evaluation uh, there were lots of good things that were said, and so I want you to be aware of that. Lots of comments also on what you wanted to see in worship, and so I appreciate those things. Those are good for us to be able to look at and to have a way that, that things are going. Let me give you just a couple of the comments that were made, and of course I'm going to give you the positive ones, so you already know that one's coming. He says, finally, we feel like we found a church where I don't dread services for fear that someone will do or say something completely out of order. I feel comfortable bringing friends and family, and we have a feeling like we have been encouraged and challenged to do better. Thank you to the elders for keeping a loving congregation. We pray for your strength and resolve and blessing on you daily. So that's a good comment. There were lots of those. Um, here's another one. I think you're doing a great job, but there's always room to improve. That's a good comment, because yes, there's room to improve, and that's what we're looking to do. Another one, I love my family of God, and I'm looking forward to coming, visiting, and worshiping each week. Keep up the great work for the Lord. And so there's, those are all good comments. Now, those are general. Uh, there were lots of others that were, here's where you need to improve. Uh, there weren't any that were mean or terrible. I hate this church, for example. Um, I'm glad we didn't get any of those. Of the comments we got in, and yes, I will be sharing those with the people who are doing those things. So message is going to be mine. Music I'm going to share with song leaders. The main difference that you saw in, in music, or in, in the song leading, is I want newer songs. I want older songs. I like the mix, but I like a few more older songs so we don't lose them. I think we ought to have more newer songs so that we don't lose the young people. I'm not sure how you solve that. Just realize, okay, we will do both of those. Depends on the song leader. Uh, I usually let the song leader pick the songs, and so some song leaders will sing older songs, some song leaders will sing newer songs, and that's kind of the way it's been working out. Uh, you will get both, hopefully, and feel like that mix is good. Um, technology, a lot of it's just, you know, can we hear, can we get the slides to work on time? Message is one that's mine, so I'll give you a little bit more of that. Uh, some people said they, that you don't quite understand. The message is confusing. Uh, some want it clearer and more simple so that they are able to state simply afterwards, here's what I learned today. Uh, one wanted an exegesis of the passage read and correct hermeneutics applied to it. And some wanted the Bible and some wanted it to be more practical as I can live today. So exegesis, practicality, 
Yeah. <laughs> For some, it was too simple, and they wanted it to be deeper. For some, it was too deep, and they got confused by it, and so they wanted a little bit more clarity and simplicity. The answer is, yes, we will do all of those. We will just not do all of those every Sunday. And so I hope you're here on the Sunday when we will do the one that you're putting down. Uh, I will try to be more clear when I'm saying things and get those across. So, yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, communion, it was more of a time issue and that sometimes things run a little bit long and things like that. And so there's a lot of different things that we had that you gave as suggestions. And I really appreciate that because... We really want the worship here to be something that is truly uplifting. And I realize sometimes things can get in the way. And it doesn't take a big thing to get in the way. It's just a child that screams in front of you the whole time and you realize, I can't see, I can't hear, I can't do anything but the child right in front of me. And so if there are those little things that get to be in the way, we want to be able to fix those. And that's the reason for all of this. We do live in 2018. I don't know if you realize that or not. But we do live in 2018. This is not the past culture of the 1950s, 1980s, or 90s. Okay? This is 2018. This is, and that's where we want to be. Uh, has your cell phone changed in the last 20 years? I didn't have one 20 years ago. So yeah, the way we communicate has completely changed. And so when you ask someone 20 years ago about making a call, they were going to be at a physical location where a phone was. If you go back to 1980, that is almost 40 years ago. It is not coming back. The things that worked in 1980 are not going to work in 2018. We understand that. Your kid would be 35, 38. He's not going to see the world the same way you see him if he was born in the 80s. I know that because I have kids that were born in the 80s. And they don't see the world the same way at all. And the same things that is worship to them is going to be to me like, I don't get it. I don't understand that. And so we have got to be able to be relevant today. The songs today need to be relevant. And so we're trying to put everybody together in a place that allows all of us to be able to worship God. And so I hope that makes sense to you. Jesus is alive today. And we are to find him in today's world. You realize they've always had this problem, though. When Paul was trying to bring Gentiles into the church... That was a huge discussion for them. And they said, no, you can't do that. You've got to change their culture to bring them in. And so we want to see them keep the old law. We want to see, see them keep circumcision. And Paul's like, no, we're not doing that. It is not going to be that you keep one culture in order to be Christian. It's the same thing true for us today. It is not the keeping of a certain culture in a certain year or time period that's going to make Christianity more relevant today. We're all alive now. And we may wish for a better time back when we can remember. Chances are you only remember the good things. You don't remember all of it. You don't remember all the struggles you had. You don't remember all the bad things that happened then. And sometimes it's hard to see all the good things that are happening now. But I think that's where we are. It is a matter of putting Jesus in our time, in our place. And he does fit because he fits in every culture. And certainly there are distractions and traditions and things that can take away. And there are also things that we can do that will benefit and enhance worship and make it much, much better. And by that, I'm not suggesting things that are doctrinally incorrect at all. Please understand that's not what we're trying to do, and we're not trying to uh, just run everything in here. So, here's the thing I want you to know today. The passage that was read to us by Josiah talks a lot about the things that they did in Ephesus. 
And it talks about everyone walking in a worthy manner for Jesus Christ. And it talks about they treat each other with humility, with gentleness, with patience, and they bear with one another in love. And they have all of this unity of the Spirit. And that unity of the Spirit comes in the bond of peace. And they were a perfect church, and everybody would get a 161 on their chart, right? No. They're a church just like us. They're a church just like us. And it says, you know, we all come together to worship. And, and a lot of us have different ideas, and a lot of us have different opinions about things, and opinions come different with everybody, but we all come together to worship God. And some of us can remember times from long ago, and we can remember the way things were done back then, and, and we really liked it, we really enjoyed it. One of the things I used to like is the preacher who would get up and he'd reference, you know, five or ten different scriptures and stories but not tell the whole thing. He's just say, you remember the prodigal son and the Samaritan woman and the good Samaritan. And you would already know all of those stories. And today, a lot of our people don't know those stories. And so we've got to do things a little bit different. And you would know when you talked about handwriting all the wall, exactly which story that was and what king it was, the time period that they were in, and exactly when that happened and the point of the story. And today when you go handwriting on the wall, they go, what? Did they get in trouble? Because they wrote on a wall? And we don't remember. And so it's a different time now, and it's just a matter of being able to put those together and being able to realize we put aside preferences in order to have unity, in order to worship God all together, because it is the together that is important to God. It is a coming together that he wants. It's not you being correct over here, and you being correct over here, and you being correct back there, because I think we used to assume the correctness made worship better. But when you look at passages and you look at the real scriptures, it's, it's more about the unity of people coming together. Nowhere is that seen more clearly than in Corinthians. The church in Corinth had a lot of problems. They had problems with spiritual gifts. They had problems with morality. They had problems with suing each other and taking each other to court. They didn't understand the resurrection. They didn't understand worship. They didn't understand spiritual gifts. They had all kinds of things happening with women who were wanting to take over the service. Uh, they had, you know, problems with communion because they had the love feast in, and how do we do that? And Paul even just says, well, this isn't really worship. This isn't really communion you're taking. And so he's going to try to talk to them about that. But I want to pull just one verse in the middle of all of that. 1 Corinthians fourteen twenty six. here's what he says. What then, brothers... When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. I like that passage. Paul simply says, you come together. In a church that was so splintered and so divided and went so many different directions and had so many different people in it. Some were claiming, well, I'm, I'm a Paul disciple. And others were saying, well, I'm an Apollos disciple. And they divided along the past preachers. We could have people say, well, I'm a John McCraney disciple. Some might say, well, I'm a Terry disciple. I, I mean... That's not going to be healthy. And so we all come together to be able to worship. And that, that, I think that's what makes the difference. And that's what he's trying to say here. We all come together and each one brings something different. Today it would be too confusing and so we all participate as one has come and they've prepared for this and they're ready for it. And then he says, let all things, everything... Everything that happens be done for building up. Everything for building up. 
It is something that is not building up, that it would be discouraging, that would tear people down. It is unscriptural. Do not do that in worship. He says everything needs to be for building up. If it isn't building up, don't do it. They had enough issues. They had enough problems. They could have brought in all the things and all the arguments and all the things about, well, no, it's got to be done like this. It's got to be done like this. He says, tell you what, we're going to put aside everything else so that everything done here is for building up. And I have an idea their service before that wasn't like that. Don't let there be anything discouraging in worship. And so we're here today to build you up. I hope the survey was good for you. Because I, I was very impressed. I mean, it came out on the top end. That looks great. So I'm glad that a lot of people are connecting with that. And we're going to work on the rest of it. Not that everybody's there, or not that anybody's there, but we're going to work on the rest of it. And so we're here for your building up today. When Jesus talked about it, there's a passage in John 12... In verse 31, he said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. It's one of those great verses. He says, When I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. He is the one thing that unites us all. And all of us gather around that cross. All of us gather at the foot of that cross. When we come to communion, all of us remember that death that Jesus gave on the cross as he shed his blood for us because that's common to all of us. And that's what draws us together. That's what makes us part of each other because we all are focused on one thing, and that is Jesus Christ is our salvation. Jesus Christ is our sacrifice. He's the one who came. He's the one who did this. He is the one thing that unites us all in everything. And we are here today because of Jesus and because of his love for us. And so we are able to come. We are able to share that worship together. And maybe today you don't feel like. Maybe you've been down on the one scale and say, well... You know, I don't like it, I don't want it, I don't need it. But maybe something today has allowed you to realize that you do need Jesus. And it's not just I need this church, it's I need Jesus. Because the rest of us are the collection of people who need Jesus. That's the focus. And certainly today, if you're struggling with that, we want to be able to help. If we can pray for you. Would you come while we stand and sing?